This is a story about life on Earth 180 million years ago, about monsters roaming free. Some were gentle giants, others deadly predators. Together, they shaped our world like nothing before or since. It's a legend so epic, so terrifying, so awe-inspiring it must be told. Welcome to the Mesozoic Era, the Middle Age of Life, spanning over 180 million years of Earth as most epic, terrifying, and awe-inspiring history. From the first dinosaurs that thundered across Pangaea, to the fall of the great lizards in a fiery cataclysm, this era forged the planet we know today. Journey through three legendary periods, the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous, where monstrous reptiles ruled the land, sea, and sky. But in the shadows, small, fur-covered survivors emerged, creatures that would outlive the giants, creatures like us. Earth is broken, continents drift apart, oceans churn, superheated and full of plastic. Volcanoes spit lava and choke the skies with ash. Then comes a moment of calm. The dust settles, revealing a cracked and barren world. A new era dawns, defined by extremes. Temperatures swing wildly, days are long and hot, nights are freezing cold. But life returns, quickly adapting to a changing world. Reptiles venture forth, diversifying and evolving rapidly. Then, suddenly, they burst forth. The first dinosaurs. These towering, long-necked creatures roam the wastelands. The Triassic has begun. Tufa 48, do we one million years ago. These proto-dinosaurs are different from their ancestors. They stand upright, freeing their front limbs to become longer and stronger. They walk into an empty world. Mammals have yet to evolve. Their ancestors still cling to life in the seas, tiny fish with big dreams, and in the sky, the first primitive flying reptiles, the pterosaurs, glide on wings that stretch up to 10 meters. Yet the greatest show is on the ground. In the deserts of Ghost Ranch, New Mexico, a creature stalks its prey. Its skin is scaly, like a crocodile, but it runs on two legs. It's Caliphysis, one of the first true dinosaurs, standing just one meter tall, weighing around 27 kilograms. It's a hunter, chasing down unlucky herbivores such as the strange-looking Tritosaurus. For now, dinosaurs are small, only a few meters long, barely bigger than a human. The environment is harsh. Water is scarce. The Triassic is a desert world. Only the tough, adaptable creatures can survive here, Plants have thick, waxy coatings to prevent water loss. Animals have scales to hold on to precious moisture. Many are nocturnal, avoiding the blistering sun. And some are clever. Small mammals have evolved from humble ancestors. They are nocturnal, furry, warm-blooded, giving birth to live babies. Their brains are large, their teeth are sharp. They are well-equipped for the long night ahead. Suddenly, the sky darkens. Smoke fills the air. There is an explosion at the Terro de las Mitras crater in what is now Spain. Ash falls over much of Europe. The end of the Triassic is marked by another mass extinction. Not all creatures are so lucky. The Caliphysis and its relatives disappear. Others adapt and become something new. The stage is set for the dinosaurs. Over millions of years, Earth heals. The atmosphere clears and the climate warms. Giant continents drift apart, separating the world's oceans. By the start of the Jurassic, there is new life everywhere. Strange beetles burrow through rotting wood. First came the conifers, then flowering plants arrive. Ferns and horsetails form dense forests. Lush rainforests cover the landscape. It's a world transformed. And in the center of it all, huge, lumbering creatures. Sauropods were once small proto-dinosaurs. Now they are titans, growing up to 20 meters long and weighing 15 tons. They move through the undergrowth like bulldozers clearing a path. In the south, near the equator, they reach their greatest size. Here, oxygen levels are higher, up to 35% compared to today's 
this extra oxygen helps them grow even larger. Further north, there are other types of sauropods. They are smaller, lighter, and built for speed. With these giants come new predators. The Allosaurus towers 4 meters tall, weighs 4.5 tons. It's built to chase down prey. Other carnivores are even bigger. The Serratosaurus has horns on its nose. The Carcharodontosaurus has giant serrated teeth. Among the reptiles, the pterosaurs soar. The largest has a wingspan of 12 meters, gliding effortlessly on air currents. Then comes the feathered wonder, Archaeopteryx. It's a mix of reptile and bird. With each generation, it gets closer to becoming a bird. On the ground, among the bushes, the mammals hide. They are still small, less than a kilogram in weight, but they have survived the past. And now they thrive in the shadows. Some are furry. Some have webbed feet for digging. Some have huge brains. They are preparing for the future. As the Jurassic ends, the continents drift apart. Land masses will continue to collide, forming new mountain ranges. But for now, the world is green and wet. Everywhere, dinosaurs rule. They are the undisputed masters of the Earth. It is their world, and then it changes. Suddenly, the landscape shifts. The climate cools. Sea levels drop. The Cretaceous has begun, 145 and 65 million years ago. Dinosaurs seem stuck in the past. Their ancestors arrived 10 million years ago. Yet in just a few million more, they will change. The ancestors of Ankylosaurus look like ordinary lizards. But today, they are monsters. Their bodies are covered in armor. Their tails are spiked clubs. Their jaws are powerful shears. Gigantic horned dinosaurs wander the landscape. The Triceratops grow six curved horns. The same goes for the ancestors of the Tyrannosaurs. Once small lizard-like creatures, now they are behemoths. The Tyrannosaurus rex stands up to six meters tall, weighs nine tons. Its head is filled with hundreds of crushing teeth. On the other hand, small nimble hunters also flourish. The Velociraptors are feathered dinosaurs. They are pack hunters, working together to chase down prey. Others are built for speed. The Ornithomimids run like ostriches. Their legs are thin and powerful. The same goes for the ancestors of the emus and ostriches. Some dinosaurs fly. The largest pterosaur, Quetzalcoatlus, soars above the landscape. It's over 10 meters wide, has a wingspan of up to 36 meters. That's the size of a jumbo jet. No wonder it could pick up a human and carry it off. On the ground, animals gallop through flowering meadows. Flowering plants, known as angiosperms, have arrived. They spread quickly, appearing on every continent in just a few million years. The Cretaceous is home to the most famous dinosaurs, the mighty Tyrannosaurus rex, the horned Triceratops, the cunning Velociraptor. But which was the greatest? The T-Rex was the last of its kind. It roamed Western North America. It was lazy, spending most of its time resting. When it moved, it was a force of nature, catching up to prey in just three steps. One bite was enough to break bones and swallow whole. Across the ocean, in the warm, shallow waters of the Western Interior Seaway, a monster reigns. The Mosasaurus is 17 meters long, weighs 35 tons. It's a whale-sized tyrant lizard king. Smaller mosasaurs have nimble bodies, perfect for chasing down prey. Others have enormous jaws with fangs as long as bananas, but they face competition. In the deep water, the plesiosaurs have four huge flippers and a turtle-like shell. Their necks can be up to eight meters long. They dive to great depths to catch fish. Some are over 20 meters long. Then, 65 million years ago, everything changes. A rock the size of a house crashes to the earth, landing near modern-day Yucatan. It's the largest object to hit the earth in a 100 million years. It leaves a crater 180 kilometers wide and 200 meters deep. In an instant, the skies darken. Fire rains down upon the earth. In the Yucatan, there is a tsunami, 100 meters high. Ash fills the air, blocking the sun. It's the end of the Cretaceous. 
Dinosaurs don't get a chance. They flee in terror. The fires consume them. Their bones turn to ash. The giant beasts are gone, but survivors remain, small mammals, quick and nimble. They peer out from the bushes. It's a brave new world. Life on Earth has changed forever. From beneath the ash and silence, survivors emerge. Small, warm-blooded, adaptable. The age of the dinosaurs ends and the age of mammals begins. Would you like me to write a full narration script for this documentary in English? Scene by scene? Ready for voiceover?